What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about our favorite home studio gear. So if you are like us and you film at home a lot or you'd like to because you have to stay at home right now, um, then this will be perfect for you. Um, because there is so much gear to choose from though, I didn't want to do this alone. So I asked each filmmaker here at Moment to choose their one must have piece of gear for their home studio where they film and shoot. So I'm gonna have Caleb start us off. What's up everybody? All right, so Taylor wanted to ask us what our little favorite must have piece of at home studio gear is. Am I in focus here? This is one of my favorite little lights, a must have. Flipped it the wrong way. This is the Aperture MC. It's just a little, it's just a nice little nugget light. I wanna tell you a little bit more about this light, but you've seen me sit in front of this desk one too many times, so I'm gonna show you um, my shed because I just finished hooking up this VCR to this old TV I found at Goodwill. And anyways, I'll go tell you about this light out there. All right, let's go check it. Boom. So sick. Watch this. Wait. What I love about this light, and I think everyone obviously needs lighting in an at-home studio, whether that's a big softbox or something small like this, or even using, uh, you could like use your laptop or any light source on the side, but this little portable light from Aperture is so skinny. Look at how thin this is. You have LED, which lasts forever. You have a simple side interface, which is just a physical on-off button a scroll wheel. This thing also has colors on it. It has like your cool and warm. So for anywhere from 3200 Kelvin, which like that doesn't look too bad. Um, and then goes all the way up to some like daylight temp. No, it goes 6500. So you can see the difference there. The cool thing is you can actually match the white balance temperature of your, the, your white balance on your camera. So I'm shooting in this room at 4100 Kelvin. So that should actually match the white balance that the camera is thinking is white too. A little warm, but pretty sick. And then obviously you have the intensity, so you can go lower from 1% all the way up to 100. So you can match the intensity to where you want it with a uh, scrolly dial. And then even better, you have a diffusion hood, um, which is cool because that what that does is soften the light even more. So now you actually have, turn that up a bit little diffusion from this. See that nice orb of glowy orb. I like the simple things like the back of this, how it has magnets because you can just stick it onto things like that. Sick. That has a magnet, your refrigerator inside. Um, don't recommend putting it on a computer or hard drives. Yeah, because of, that's obvious. If we wanna go ultra moody, Turn this off. So you can see now it's a super versatile moody light, like maybe one of your favorite YouTubers, like Peter McKinnon or Maddie. This is that super good moody light. With just a simple press of the button on the side, you can then cycle it over to the hue so you can get a range of RGB colors. It also hooks up Bluetooth to an app if you wanna control it from your phone. So if you have this on the side or it makes a cool up light for your background. And also you have one other insanely funny feature called effects. It literally says fire. You got cop car, hold on. So. Paparazzi. Anyway, so you have, you basically have these funny options that are actually kind of cool. Cop car, I'd probably use for, for some good jokes. Anyways, I'm pretty stoked on this little Aperture MC light. We have a few different Aperture lights on our site right now. I think three of them. This one sits right in the middle and it's the one, this one has all the color options. So this little thing, you know, I bring everywhere. It slips right in my backpack or my pouch pack, wherever I do go, but it also stays at home. Whether your studio is in your house or in your shop, Comment below if I should film out here more. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Kearns now. He's gonna tell you about one of his favorite at home studio work from home uh, items.
What's good? Kern's here. And I'm here to talk to you about this tripod I use. This is the carbon fiber travel tripod by Peak Design. And ever since I've gotten it, I really don't not use it. Does that? Ever since I've gotten it, I am always using this tripod. I used to not be a tripod guy. I just neglected them because they were annoying and just frustrating to use and took up a lot of room. This thing solves all of those problems. As you can see, it's super small. This is compared to a carpet sweeper. And the carbon fiber one only weighs 2.81 pounds, so it's really easy to bring along on trips. It's like the first tripod that I've ever used. That's just convenient. This thing is rocket fast to set up to. Three, two, one. Oh. Boom. That was not my best time, but it wasn't too bad. Right now I'm not using the tripod, obviously, so I'm using a stack of photo books as well as some cup um, coasters and an LED light remote. This was my life before this tripod. The tool has a little slot right there, which is super convenient. You can just un... Oops. This is great because you don't have to keep track of a bunch of quarters to tighten and loosen your plates. This is the only camera I have. For example, it's an underwater film camera. Would never use it on a tripod, but it gets the point across. Boom. Plates on. So the nice part about this, as you can see, it's unlocked. So this, this tab right here goes down. So you can just slide your camera in just like that. Then you'll want to switch that unlock to lock. Boom. That's not going anywhere. It's super tight on there. And if you want to remove it, all you have to do is shift that switch back to unlock. Easy. A cool little feature they have hidden down here. Actually, it's not really hidden. They advertise it pretty heavily because it's sick. There's like a phone clip that comes with it. So there's the clip in there. Snug as a bug. Cellular. Don't read my texts. And... Wapah. Now you have a phone mount built right into your tripod there, which is pretty sick, pretty convenient. And I'm gonna switch back to the camera real quick to show you one last feature, which is the rotating ball head. You see how fast I just switched that? So this thing tightens and loosens and makes it able to rotate, but one really dope thing is you can fully go 90 degrees. This is dope because a lot of tripods, they don't come with heads like this, and these heads cost more than $100 usually to just be able to simply go from there to there. You can set it in front of you and then bring up the middle column, bring it down, rotate that ball head to wherever you want it to point. This carbon fiber travel tripod by Peak Design is simple, compact, and convenient. And truly that is all I could ever want in a product that I use. The thing with tripods is I see them as like a one-time purchase. There's really no reason to buy so many tripods in your life. So as this price tag is high, it is a really worthwhile investment. If you're looking to invest in a good tripod, like this one has my vote. All right, and with that, smile. Off to you, Niles. All right, check focus. Okay, all right, what is up, y'all? Um, this is my section of the video, and I'm gonna talk to you about the Osmo 3 and why I think that this little gimbal that can fit pretty much in your pocket uh, is perfect for almost any studio. So the reason that I really like this gimbal is first of all, because it works super well for when you're on trips. It can fit in a fanny pack, it can fit in a jacket pocket. I use it a ton. I know a bunch of other filmmakers who use it a lot as well, but it also works well for a home studio because a lot of times we just need to pick up a quick B-roll shot and setting up your DSLR or your cinema rig with a big gimbal can take a long time. And now these days with phones being so good at so much with shooting that you can just throw your phone in this little guy and get super good footage. So the benefit is twofold here. You can get good B-roll, good like push-ins, push-outs, kind of wraparounds with this for a YouTube video or for some sort of product video, but you can also use it for just other things for social media. If you wanted to do a quick behind the scenes of your set and do a push through, you can go from horizontal to vertical, which is super nice. So if you're sh shooting something for TikTok or IG stories or whatever, uh, you can quickly throw it in this orientation, which is super helpful. 
All right, so really quick, I'm gonna just do a, a little bit of shooting on uh, my phone with this gimbal. No filter, no lenses or anything, just to show you how good it can actually look. So uh, yeah, there's like some books and stuff, so I'm just gonna, yeah, just gonna shoot some of this stuff as if it was a product or something I was looking to highlight. All right, guys, so that kind of wraps up this section. I'm gonna pass it on over to Mike, but yeah, just again, this is a little cinematic powerhouse, smooth shots, just really up your production value. So I think that having this at a really good price point and something that you can just throw your phone in to get a bunch of buttery footage is super important for any home studio. And you can also take it a bunch of places because it's so small, it's like you can shoot a, tra a travel video with it too. So yeah, um, Mike, take it away. How's this look? All right, thank you, Niles. Now let's jump into some audio equipment. I wanna talk about two different products. The first product I wanna talk about is the Rode Video Micro. Um, this microphone is, I think, probably one of the most underrated microphones. I think most people um, focus on lenses and the filmmaking and the video side of things, and sometimes they forget about the audio side. What this little microphone provides is it's a shotgun microphone, so it's only recording what's right in front of it, and it has this funny little thing on top, um, which is basically a windscreen. Sometimes people call it a dead cat, which is kind of a funny name, but um, yeah, it's gonna prevent uh, the horrible wind noise from like amateur sounding audio, and it's gonna be really good at getting directional audio. Um, like I said, this is an awesome microphone for doing stuff like vlogs, um, which is what I initially got it for. It's really small. It actually works as a vlogging mic on my Sony, but it also works as a great vlogging mic on my iPhone. And honestly, like if you're getting into vlogging and things and you want a mic um, to start off with and you don't have a bunch of money, this is an awesome option. Um, we sell this little kit on our store, so if you're interested in that, go check it out. But what's great is that basically it's a super small little package. It's not too obtrusive. You can attach moment lenses to your phone and get a wider angle of view if you wanna shoot in um, a wider angle. But yeah, this is gonna give me really good um, directional, high quality audio. So I'm gonna plug this in really quick and show you what it sounds like. All right, guys, I now have the phone plugged in with the microphone. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty cool little vlogging rig. I love this little mini Manfrotto tripod. You can kind of hold it like this. I wanna show you guys, though, the difference between using a directional microphone and why it's important. I'm gonna go turn on some loud music in my living room, and I'm gonna show you guys the difference of me uh, pointing towards the music and away from the music. So let's go do that. This is pointed towards me, and now it's pointed towards me and the speaker back here. Oh. All right, so the audio cable that comes with a microphone is a three and a half millimeter um, cable on both ends. There's two different types of these, so make sure you know which one you're using, but you can also buy um, longer cables. So if you wanna do something like in a studio environment, um, you can buy a cable on uh, Amazon that's pretty affordable that allows you to kind of plug it in and run the microphone from wherever. So this is using that same microphone. Um, hopefully it sounds pretty good and maybe you can tell the difference between the two different audio channels, but um, I've, yeah, I've used it before. I've actually used this thing for voiceovers and it sounds pretty dang good. So um, like I said, super underrated microphone for the fact that it's so affordable. All right, so that was the Rode Video Micro. Now let's talk about another offering. If you have a little bit more money to spend, Rode recently came out with another microphone called the Rode Video Mic NTG. I'm honestly super intrigued into it because um, it's super versatile. You can plug it into your computer uh, via USB-C, but you can also use it on your camera as well. So if you want to shoot your short film, uh, your documentary, your you know vlogs, whatever you want to shoot with, um, you can do that. But you can also set it up and plug it into your computer, which could be cool if you want to record maybe like yourself playing an instrument, um, a podcast, um, any kind of professional audio on your computer. You can plug it in and um, use it there as well. 
What's really cool with uh, this microphone, the Rode NTG, is that you can plug it in via USB and recharge it and it lasts 30 hours. So um, definitely go and check that out. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to pass it back to Taylor. Hopefully you guys are all staying safe at home and hopefully this is um, useful information to you guys. You can actually build out an in-home little studio pretty easily and pretty affordably. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, yeah, and with that, back to you, Taylor. Back to you, Taylor. Back to you, Taylor. And we thought, let's go back to you, Taylor. I'm going freaking crazy. All right, so with that, back to Taylor and me, back to Xbox. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I have to work. Okay, and while Dewey is absolutely losing his mind, I am going to tell you about my favorite piece of gear for my in-home studio, and that is the Moment 14 millimeter fisheye lens. This thing is probably my favorite lens to shoot on um, at home and to vlog at home, and that's just because it's a super wide image, but it's tack sharp and it's bright from edge to edge, so you're not getting any vignetting, um, no dark corners, no fuzziness around the edges. It's sharp, it's bright, and this thing is gonna give you a 170 degree field of view, whereas a lot of the phones built in ultra wides are like 120 or 130. So you're getting a lot more room in your picture with the 14 millimeter I have here. I mean, the cinema quality glass that this thing was made with really does show in your image. Um, and obviously a fisheye lens is going to be perfect for action sports, but it is very helpful while vlogging or shooting at home. So I'm gonna pop this thing on and uh, I'm gonna move over to the iPhone and show you what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the 14 millimeter. I mean, it's awesome for action sports and things like that. It does make a lot of sense for those activities, but it is really cool for interior shots like this one. This image is way more exciting than what the native iPhone camera would give me, which let me show you that. That is without the 14 millimeter mounted. And in my opinion, it's much less exciting and it's just sort of like average looking. Um, so the 14 is gonna give you some like spice. Um, I'm gonna mount it back on so I can show you how great it is for vlogging. Once I have some more coffee. So this is great because it's so wide, you know you're in the shot, you have nothing to worry about and you can walk around and vlog whether inside or outside and um, you can, you know, be sure that you're not like cutting off your eye or something. But I love kind of pairing footage from the 14 millimeter with footage from say the 58 millimeter or even your iPhone's native camera for B-roll or something. And that's just gonna give your videos really, really nice variety and make them super interesting to watch. So I hope this was helpful and shows you how sick this lens is. All right, so that is the 14 millimeter. It's a really awesome look. It's just a compact and affordable way to get kind of that GoPro style. And of course you need a way to mount the lens to your phone. So that requires either a moment case like this one or the universal mount that we just released. So super easy, super quick and really awesome results. I hope that sharing some of these products with you guys was helpful. Um, building out a home studio can be really fun, really easy, and actually quite affordable. So I hope this was helpful. Let us know your favorite home studio gear options in the comments. We would love to hear what you guys are using and what you guys love. And also be sure to go check out our site because we just launched a really exciting new kind of category in our shop and it is all working from home, kind of home office supplies. We have standing desks, monitors, keyboards, organization tools. I mean, there's a ton on there. When I first saw it, I was blown away. So be sure to check that out and um, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.